Today, I'm going to be taking your materials and turn them into this. This idea is based off of the idea of parallax occlusion mapping, which if you haven't seen before, is a fancy texture coordinate trick that makes it look like you're staring through a window into a three-dimensional space, but without all the compute time of actual displacement mapping, where you have to add more geometry each time, this is much faster. So I'm on texturehaven.com, which is a website where you can get PBR materials, but the important thing is that it comes with a height or a displacement map. So here's our material. This is the standard PBR workflow and we can do a lot better. I'm going to import in this height map, and you're going to notice that I can take cross sections of basically the height of this to separate out different layers. And the idea is if I make a duplicate of this and change the material such that it's only like looking at part of it, from the top view, it's going to look a bit more 3D. So now I have five planes, so this is literally five faces, and this is already looking substantially more three-dimensional. But of course, I don't want to make like a bunch of different materials for this. I want a single material and a procedural way to control the number of layers. You're going to select your object and add an array modifier, set this to constant offset, making sure that it goes a bit up on the Z axis. And this is going to let you add as many layers as you want. And then to differentiate between these in the material, I'm going to do a little trick and the UVs just bring this up by one so that each layer is shifted on the UV coordinates by one unit to the X, which is going to tell us which layer is which. And with a basic node setup, and I just kind of crank up this value, uh, you can see that every layer, every sheet has a different like brightness, or in other words, we know which layer is which. Since we have uh, 12 planes, I'm going to turn this number into 12. And all we need to do is compare this to the initial texture. So I'm just going to see which one is greater than which. Uh, so just connect that to the alpha. And by the way, if you're using EV, you're going to get all these black planes because our material isn't like ready to handle transmission. So go to the material settings. And then in the blend mode, I can set both of these to alpha clip, both this and the shadow. And from the top view, this three dimensional effect is perfect. But of course, you're going to see the slicing from the side. So let me show you a trick. I'm going to change the blend mode from alpha clip now to alpha blend instead of this greater than which kind of creates these like thresholds. I'm going to set this to subtract, which kind of creates softer layers. And if I add in a color ramp, I'm going to set this to ease and then bring down the white level. You can see we kind of get the same thing, but now we can soften it a little. So take the alpha and replace it with this. But as I increase this, you're going to see kind of blurs and softens, which actually adds a lot of padding to this. But now you're going to see that there's holes in the bottom. And this is because it's also affecting our bottom initial plane, which should just be opaque. So to isolate this one, I'm going to use the compare function and I want to know which one is the zeroth plane. So we can take this and mix it with our custom thing making sure to set the bottom layer to one and then all of a sudden we get our bottom layer back. I mean look at how 3D this is. So instead of 12 slices let's bump this up to 60 which kind of creates more slices but you can't see what's going on. This is because we have to update the 12 number to 60 so now you can see we have many more slices and it's going to look a lot blurrier and this is because our planes are basically going too high. So take the Z and divide it by five because we added five times as many layers and now we got the this really three-dimensional effect that also doesn't look too bad from the side. And then something you might want to know is when we change this to cycles, again, we get these black planes. And this is because cycles is a path or a ray tracing engine, meaning that some of these light things are going to get stuck in these like 60 layers of planes. So we just got to throw more compute at this. Take the light paths and take transparent, which basically says, how much should I compute going through the alpha layers and bring this up? So every time I bring this up, you're going to see it's looking a bit better. You bring this number high up enough, and now you're going to see that it's working in cycles, which is going to give you a better look but now we are kind of spending more compute except probably not as much as if we did actual geometry displacement which would give us like millions of polygons so this is still like absurdly faster and even with basic distortion so i'm going to add some loop cuts and bring this up even with basic distortions this is going to work as a 3d effect the only difference is the array modifier is going directly up but now our normals have changed so really what you want to do is extrude this by the normals i can make another uh, tutorial for how to do that if you're interested i made a version version of this that actually does not rely on these stacks. And what this is, is it's a version that actually works on curved surfaces and and it's actually only a single layer instead of being a stack. So let me show you how this works. This is the version without any of my uh, parallax displacement. And this is the version with it. So you can see that it's actually much more 3D, especially when I rotate it. So this is the version without it. So it's basically just a material with a uh, normal mapping, but check out my version. It, like it actually has some like observed depth. You're gonna see a bit of an outline and I'm working on a optimization that fixes this, but look how three dimensional it is for basically free. I mean, look at that, it's three dimensional yet it's only a uh, single face. I'm making UV coordinates that kind of interpret the depth, and this is what we're using to map onto the textures. So there you go.